What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media bringing you the very first episode of a new series coming to the channel called CM Strats and this is basically going to be a series where we take a look at the different competitive Pokemon that I use on my channel um, on a daily basis. For those of you that have been around here on the channel, you know that I post a competitive battle every single day. I've got other stuff going on like random let's plays and uh, you know just other little things but the main focus of my channel is competitive battling and I have whether it be battle spot I do like inverse battles although that's coming to an end uh, because the battle spot season is ending I do just regular Wi-Fi battles I'm gonna be adding some different things uh, to mix it up a little bit more in the future as well but that's on the channel every day so you see a lot of these Pokemon that I have kind of like circulating you see them every every once in a while a lot of you have been asking for a long time that I start posting some kind of tutorials or strategy guides or suggestions or just detailing my sets because you feel that or you guys felt like that would help you out a lot and help other people out a lot we can learn together and that's that's just what it is so I decided you know what that is a fantastic suggestion and I'm gonna be taking that I'm gonna be taking that and running with it so this is this is on you guys this is your idea and this is me just uh, doing my best to implement it and try to help everybody out so um, with that being said if you want to see more videos like this make sure you click that thumbs up button make sure you go in the comment section below and tell me that you enjoyed the series or give me a suggestion to Pokemon you'd like to see um, like for example any any of the Pokemon that I use go through my videos, see what Pokemon you're curious about and I will make a video about it detailing it why I use it we're gonna be going over natures EVs items abilities what moves I bring on the Pokemon that uh, you see what tier it's in any possible mega evolutions we're gonna go over its stats it's gonna be very in-depth so you'll know exactly why I'm using uh, these specific Pokemon and I hope that that's gonna help you out um, but if there's things I don't cover in the video make sure again write in the comment section below ask any question you want I'll be happy to get back to you also my Twitter link is always in the description of every video so if you have questions or concerns feel free to hit me up there. The only tweets I don't respond to all the time are the many battle requests that I get because I can't take everyone's battle. So I just, I normally ask when I'm going to be looking for battles and don't just take requests. So that's, that aside, if you have legitimate questions, I'll be sure to uh, answer them and get back to you as soon as possible. Now let's get into the actual video. Today, we are looking at Blastoise. As you know, Blastoise is in the UU tier, as you see in the upper right hand corner there. Uh, it does have a Mega Evolution, and Mega Blastoise is also UU. Some people think that Mega Blastoise, when it, uh, or the Mega Stone, when you Mega Evolve it, it is a OU Pokemon. That is not true. It is just UU all of the time, all the time. Now, why don't I use Mega Blastoise? Um, I do sometimes, but I haven't used it in probably a good six months or so, and that is because I feel like Blastoise is a good enough Pokemon where you can make it work and then still have that slot open for a Mega Evolution for Pokemon that don't necessarily work as well on their own, such as Manectric, such as Amphoraz, such as Medicham. I mean, those Pokemon can work without Mega Stones, but they're much more they're much more reliant on them than Blastoise is. Now, as for the buffs that Blastoise gets when it does Mega Evolve, just so that we're all clear here, it does go from 83 base attack to 103 virtually useless because Blastoise is a special attacker almost all the time. Anyway, its defense gets buffed 20 points from 100 to 120. Its special attack gets the biggest raise at 50 points from 85 to 135. Its special defense goes from 105 to 115 and its speed stays the same. So HP and speed are the only thing that are uh, unaffected by the Mega Evolution. Now, the defenses get buffed but really not, not that much. It gains a little bit of bulk but we can get similar or more bulk by giving it an assault vest. So that'll make it very bulky on the special side. Very, very bulky. And you miss out on a, a huge special attack buff, but that's not what we're gonna be using Blastoise for. We're not using it for a sweeper. We're not using it as a wall breaker. We'll have other Pokemon on our team that can fill that role. Basically what this Blastoise does is it is a tank set. It can switch in on special attacks, and most of the time, even very powerful attacks on the special side are going to be three-hit KOs. If you have wish-passing abilities on your team, this thing is going to last forever, and it will get you out of jams, left and right, all the time. 
I mean, that's what it does for me. Just watch some of the videos. And in fact, I'll try to uh, leave in the description uh, some videos or links to some of my videos where I've used this thing, if I uh, remember to do that. Hopefully I do. Um, that way you can see how I use it and see it in action. Um, so yeah, it's basically supposed to be a tank set. It can take hits and at the same time it can dish out some damage. That's what the modest nature is for. That is a plus special attack nature and minus attack I believe so yeah you don't need I mean you don't you really don't need any attack investment on a Blastoise ever so that's what the modest nature is for it gives you a little extra oomph so that your attacks actually do a little bit of damage now let's go into the EVs we have 236 HP which seems kind of kooky because normally you see 252 I'm gonna explain that in a minute we're gonna max out our special attack to give maximum firepower to this thing so that when we take hits, we can actually deal some damage when we uh, respond back. Most of the time, Blastoise is not gonna be outspeeding things, so that is something to uh, look into. And then we have the 20 base speed, and the reason that that is there is because that will help us outspeed uninvested minimum speed uh, base 80 speed Pokemon, such as Dragonite. That would be one. Mamoswine is another one. These are OU Pokemon. I mean, sometimes you come up against those. Not when you're just battling in UU, but if you're doing mixed tier, or if you're taking Blastoise to OU, like I have quite a few times. Uh, these are Pokemon that you might want to outspeed, and sometimes they're not invested in speed. Sometimes they're invested in their HP or their defenses or something. If that's the case, uh, you will outspeed them with your 20 speed EVs. That's where the 236 HP uh, EVs come from because basically everything that's left after maxing out special attack and giving that little boost in speed We just dump that into HP for maximum bulk the item is the assault vest. I mentioned this already That will give you a 50% increase in your Special defense so like I said, you'll be able to take special hits very well You will almost always be able to survive a, a, a super effective hit so Blastoise will be able to take Thunderbolts most of the time it will be able to take I've seen it take solar beams before so it depends on what Pokemon is dishing out the Solar Beam, obviously. It's not unlimited bulk, but Blastoise will be able to take it most of the time. The ability is Rain Dish, which is its hidden ability. Blastoise also has access to Torrent, but Torrent really doesn't help out too much. There's not a lot of cases in which Blastoise is just sitting at low HP for a long period of time. And we're not trying to just break through our opponent's team like crazy. We're not a wall breaking set, so Torrent doesn't do a whole lot for us. If Rain is on the field for some reason, be it via Polytoad's Drizzle or something else is setting up Rain Dance, Rain Dish is nice to have as an added bonus to get some HP back each turn. Now we're going to go over the moves that uh, I run on my Blastoise. I used to run Signal Beam, but I actually replaced that because it didn't give the coverage that I wanted it to. So. We're not going to uh, worry about that because if you watch some of the videos with Blastoise in it, it did have Signal Beam, but I did replace that. So we have Scald as number one, and that's going to be our stab move. It's got 80 base power, 100% accuracy, 30% chance to burn. So that is huge because that will increase and patch up Blastoise's now lower physical uh, defensive stats because obviously our special defense is boosted by that Assault Vest. Getting a burn will really stop anything that's trying to break Blastoise on the physical side. It will really, really help you out, including dragons, just anything. Anything that's a physical attacker will not appreciate getting burned. Ice Beam is for grass types. If you can predict a grass type switch in, you can nail it with an Ice Beam. A lot of cases you can get a two hit KO because we are running quite a bit of uh, special attack investment. In fact, max special attack investment with the modest nature and the 252 special attack EVs. Uh, Ice Beam also takes care of flying types and dragon types, so that is great. It's super effective on ground types too, but normally you're going to be wanting to use Scald on those. Uh, now, as for Dark Pulse, the reason that we have that is because of our fourth move. So I'll go over the fourth move first, and then we'll, we'll backtrack a little bit. We'll take a few steps backwards and take a look at Dark Pulse. Rapid Spin is there to support the team. And this really depends on what the rest of your team looks like. Um, but Blastoise is a fantastic spinner because it's really hard to knock it out in one hit. So it's really hard to stop Blastoise from getting a rapid spin off. Uh, so you can get rid of rocks, stealth rocks, you can get rid of spikes, you can get rid of toxic spikes, you can get rid of... What is the other one that I'm thinking of? Sticky Whip! 
which can also be a problem, especially this generation. Well, not especially this generation, only this generation, I should say. I should say. Because Sticky Web was not a thing before, neither was Assault Vest. Uh, getting a little bit sidetracked, though. Rapid Spin is great for supporting the team, especially when you have Pokemon that don't appreciate it, like Focus Sash users, like Flying Types, or Fire Types, or Ice Types. Um, and coincidentally, some of these other types of uh, Pokemon work really well and synergize well with Blastoise, so we'll go over that in a little bit as well. But Rapid Spin is great. You want to have a Rapid Spin user on just about every team, um, because ro in singles, in singles, rocks, spikes, and sticky web, they're everywhere. They're all over the place, and it's not just OU, it's in the lower tiers as well. So if you're battling in those tiers, it's a singles match, you're going to be seeing some kind of entry hazards most of the time. So you need to have some way to get rid of them. Defog is another option, but um, you can have Defog and Rapid Spin on the same team. You can never have enough Pokemon that can get rid of uh, hazards because you don't know when the, when in the battle those Pokemon are going to go down and when you'll need that kind of support later on. Now, with that being said, Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse is there specifically for when your opponent sees or knows you're going to have Blastoise uh, Rapid Spinning. Because when you see a Blastoise, most competitive players will think it's probably carrying Rapid Spin. If they've got hazards up, what they're going to do is they're going to switch in their Ghost Types to try to block that Rapid Spin. That is what the Dark Pulse is there for. And they switch in those Ghost Types, nail them with the Dark Pulse. A lot of times you're going to get a 2 hit KO, especially on uh, Kofagrigus, which is fairly common in UU. It's actually an RU Pokemon, but people bring it to UU a lot because it's very effective as a wall and a Spin Blocker. Um... So, Kofagrigus is a big one that you'll be able to really just nail when it comes in. If you're playing in OU, Aegislash is very, very common. It's not going to appreciate a Dark Pulse. Um, it's not going to be a one-shot or anything. And when it's in Shield Mode, I'm not even positive that it's going to be a two-hit KO. You need to be careful with Aegislash, though, because a lot of times it will carry the weakness policy. So, if you fire off a Dark Pulse as it switches in, you'll activate that and... It might be able to pick you off with a Shadow Sneak afterwards, so you need to be careful. But just in general, most Ghost Types are not going to enjoy switching in on a Dark Pulse. So that is that is cool. And even the ones that carry T-Bolt sometimes, like Gengar, if it switches in and tries to T-Bolt you, it's obviously going to outspeed and you'll ensure the KO because you're going to live a T-Bolt from a Gengar with an Assault Vest. In fact, I think you would live it anyway with HP investment, but... That is besides the point. So that's the move sets. That is the basic strategy behind this. Uh, bis, bis, bah, 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 I can't talk behind using this Blastoise. Now I'm going to go over the base stats. I don't know. I guess I went over it a little bit earlier, but we're going to go over it again just um, as an overview. We got the 79 HP, 83 attack is unimportant, 100 defense. So you're going to be able to tank physical hits fairly well anyway, uh, without the without any kind of investment. 85 special attack, but we've got all that investment, so we're going to be packing a little bit of a punch. The 105 special uh, defense is great, and the base 78, and that is the main reason for those speed EVs, as I mentioned, because if you're uninvested, you're not even going to speed tie with um, uninvested base 80s, so you will just get outsped every time. That's what those EVs are there for. It doesn't always come in handy, but it does. You can surely, if you don't care about that, you can surely just dump those 20 H, uh, or those 20 EVs into HP if you would rather have that. But that's just my reasoning behind it. Like I mentioned, I used to have Signal Beam on this Blastoise um, in place of Dark Pulse, but Dark Pulse is way better to hit um, Ghost Type switching in, trying to block your Rapid Spin. Just a fantastic move. And it will also help you take care of uh, Psychic types just like Signal Beam would anyway. Also, you could run Aura Sphere. It gives you some decent coverage against Pokemon like Ferrothorn and Tyranitar in OU, specifically. Uh, but most of the time, with the Sand Up, you're not going to be one-shotting Tyranitar anyway. And Ferrothorn, I don't think you're going to one-shot that either, because you're just not, you're not powerful enough. We don't have enough punch. It would be a different case scenario if we were running Mega Blastoise and we had the Mega Launcher boost. Um, now, with all of that being said, we pretty much, pretty much ripped apart this set. One more thing that I want to go into is teammates. What can you use with this Blastoise set uh, that makes an effective team? First of all, 
Let's take a look at Blastoise's weaknesses. He's weak to electric and grass types only because he's just a pure water type. So the only type that I can think of that easily comes to uh, the front of my mind here that resists both electric and grass is going to be dragon types. So if you're in OU, Latios, Latias, uh, Dragonite. Now, unfortunately, Dragonite, if they have any, any dragon type Pokemon that has part flying in it is not going to be resisting electric anytime soon. Um, and the dragons that have part ground type are not going to be resisting grass types, but they will resist the electric types, so on and so forth. But they still synergize very well with Blastoise. Very, very well. Because Blastoise, especially with the Assault Vest, it can switch in on Ice Beams that are meant for things like Garchomp, Salamence, Haxorus. They can switch in on those Ice Beams all day. They can switch in all day and take Ice Beams. It doesn't matter if it's Stab or not. Blastoise is going to take that like a champion and should be able to respond back with some type of, of attack. Be it Scald or getting a Rapid Spin off. You know, whatever it may be, Blastoise will be able to uh, t take that Ice Beam hit and respond back with whatever you want to go for. Uh, that being said, Fire types synergize very well with Blastoise because one, they can take out grass types very easily. I'm going to use the example of Darmanitan because Darmanitan, one, does not like Stealth Rocks and it takes a lot of recoil from Flare Blitz and those kinds of moves, so it doesn't really want to be taking Stealth Rocks damage 25% of its HP every time it switches in. So having Blastoise on the team is great. Blastoise actually will take out rock types that are super effective on Dermanitan, ground types that are super effective on Dermanitan, and like I said, remove those rocks as well. So that is pretty awesome. Pretty, pretty awesome. And Dermanitan can come in, if you can get it in safely, it can come in and destroy grass types. So, and they give Blastoise a little bit of a hard time. I mean, Blastoise can take hits from them, but you don't want to be taking super effective hits if you don't need to. Darmanitan will remove that for you. Ground types also can synergize somewhat well with Blastoise because it can take out they can take out uh, electric types. But the downside of that is that they have uh, they both share the weakness to grass. So uh, you might have to rely on Ice Beam or something else that can take out grass types if you want to use ground type Pokemon as your um, as a teammate. Two other types of Pokemon that really work well with Blastoise, either Mega or just regular Blastoise. Um, we've got Volt Absorb users and Motor Drive users because they are both immune to electricity. Motor Drive will absorb the electric type attack and boost its speed. And then we've got the Volt Absorb users that will absorb and get its health back um, from any electric type move as well. So we're talking about Jolteon, we're talking about Lantern, we're talking about Electivire, even Zeb Strike, depending on uh, how creative you're feeling. But all of those Pokemon make great partners. Great, great partners, because Blastoise can take out ground type Pokemon that would normally threaten these electric types. So that is great. And when you have an electric type on the field that will be threatening Blastoise, you can safely switch into ground types most of the time, or not ground types, you can safely switch into. Um, these Volt Absorb or Motor Drive Pokemon pretty safely and usually get a boost in your stats. So not only are you immune to the hit, but you're going to get Switch Initiative and some type of advantage, be it speed or extra HP or what have you. Uh, so that, that is a thing. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Pretty much all I wanted to say. I can't think of anything else. I'm sure as soon as I stop recording this, I'll think of something that I wanted to mention. But for now, that is pretty much all there is to uh, this Blastoise set that I use. I feel like I've gone um, pretty in detail. I mean, this is almost 20 minutes. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, remember, leave a some kind of comments, you know, explaining it, whether you liked it or not, or what I could do differently that you might enjoy, or things that I should include that uh, would help out more that I didn't include in this video. Um, and of course, always leave a thumbs up. That does help out a lot as well. Uh, I have a couple of these videos planned out, so I'm going to do those. If you guys have suggestions and I see a lot of them, I'll start implementing them um, in another video or two. So that is that. And uh, yeah, I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you all for the next episode. But until then, game on.